round of applause. And then... Good morning, everyone. My name is Isabella Shiokuri, and I'm from Brazil. And my name is Mika Takamashi from Japan. My name is Patricia Hirendo, I'm from Brazil as well. My name is Mika Yoshida, I'm from Japan. Uh, we, are from, we are all from Sofa University. Uh, today we would like to share the um, humanistic, humanistic education and ethical leadership. According to Robertson and many other scholars, uh, globalization generates an increase in global mobility and complexity, which means the compress the time and space. On the other hand, how to compress the um, conflict occurs due to the crash of diversification and the virus. The point is that for a presentation emphasized by the United States, the United States and um, which, which well, uh, really, which generates the Negative, negative reactions by other nations. Uh, another example is refugee crisis. Although there is a refugee crisis happening all, all over the world, uh, there is a reluctance to accept the, uh, other people from different backgrounds. Therefore, ethical morality is designed to solve these global issues. So ethical leadership is one of the most, most efficient leadership to make social change. In this country, and because it's from because the moral moral values are become more um, common ground for global relations. So then, how can we foster ethical leadership? To answer the question, we focus on interdisciplinary approach in humanistic education because it promotes um, holistic values, self transformation, and self growth. So we said. Um, Research question. How does an interdisciplinary approach in humanistic education develop the ethical leadership? This is the great agenda. Um, first of all, we would like to share the definition of interdisciplinary approach, humanistic education, and ethical leadership. Afterwards, we would like to share our research methodology, major findings, indication, and data direction, and we will conclude our presentation. So from now on, I would like to share the theory of interdisciplinary approach. So interdisciplinary approach deals with the uh, issue in complex setting, meaning encompasses different uh, or various views and players. In other words, interdisciplinary approach is a means to deal with multidimensional issues from various perspectives. And integral part of interdisciplinary approach is an integration process to create something new cognitive advancement or even more comprehensive theory. And according to Karl Mannheim, who is a Hungarian sociologist, uh, and uh, stresses a crucial connection of interdisciplinary approach in humans of interdisciplinary approach in education to uh, foster individuals with democratic personality and creative tolerance. And he value, uh, stresses the value of total awareness which is uh, awareness of total situation as far well as humanly possible at the given stage of uh, history. And education for such total awareness is indispensable for democratic planning, and it aims to foster individuals who think and understand the environment that they are situated uh, to make them become more substantially rational. And to achieve such total awareness, interdisciplinary approach in education is uh, crucial. And so here is an example of interdisciplinary approach in education. So as Mika shared in the introduction, there is, for example, a refugee crisis as an inter uh, international problem currently. And but to approach this issue, a political perspective is not enough to create something new to solve this uh, problem. But to include social, cultural, historical, economic, economical perspective to create something new. Um, uh, solutions to approach this issue is important. And that's why in interdisciplinary approach in education, we all study those subjects to understand the whole situation to approach this single issue uh, in education. Thank you, Mikana. I'd like to proceed to the definition of humanistic education 
used in this research. So some educational institutions, they tend to be a reproduction of the society they are included in. However, John Dewey believed that the purpose of education is not for self-reproduction, but for self-transformation. Okay, then how does this self-transformation happen? According to Dewey, self-transformation happens when there is a continuous growth generated from the interaction with one's environment and surrounding individuals. Moreover, Dewey stated that social development occurs in a form of associated living or joint community experience. In other words, when there is communication and interaction with peers, there is social development. And social development in this case then is also addressed as shared growth. In other words, shared growth will happen when there is communication and interaction with those around us. And now we're going to move on to the definition of ethical leadership. So since we explain what is an uh, interdisciplinary approach to municipal education, so why ethical leadership in global higher education? So according to Stiula, she states that ethics are the heart of leadership. So that's why ethical leadership is so important for a positive change in society. Therefore, in our house, 2016, he states five different principles to develop global, um, sorry, ethical leadership. So the first principle is to respect others. So meaning when leaders, they are able to listen and to be tolerant about different perspectives. The second principle is to serve others, meaning when leaders, they integrate vision with the members as mentors. The third principle is to show justice is when leaders they make decisions based on the value of fairness. The fourth principle is um, honesty, manifest honesty, and these encourage leaders to be authentic and sensitive to disclose appropriate solutions. And our final principle is building a sense of community, meaning that ethical leaders are concerned about the common good of society. So based on these five principles, where can we see in global higher education? So students can develop ethical leadership when they participate in club activities or when they participate in academic group studies or even in social activities on campus. So since we introduced all of these theories, now we'd like to explain our research methodology. Thank you. So to assess this uh, interdisciplinary positive impact to the students, we, uh, we set four variables. Total awareness, self transformation, shared growth, and leadership values. Um, each variable comes from each playlist. Total awareness comes from interdisciplinary goals. Self transformation and shared growth come from uh, humanist education. And leadership values come from ethical leadership. To, to assess it, we conducted questionnaire and interviews on, in Soga University and Soga University of America. Since this is institution based on humanistic education. Mm -hmm. uh, Faculty of International Liberal Arts, which is called PIRA, in Soka University, and Soka University of America practice interdisciplinary approach, mm -hmm. and they include study abroad as a part of their educational, educational program. Mm -hmm. And for the questionnaire, we conducted a survey of two main groups uh, from Soka University. Uh, students who study in interdisciplinary model and those who study in single discipline model. So we we aim to compare with compare the scores between the students from Pila and others. Mm -hmm. We got 150 answers and we got 12 questions for to assess them to, to assess it and three questions for each variable. For interviews. We interviewed two, two graduates from Soka University of America. The subjects have experience in the experience, the leadership position, and they received interdisciplinary approach. And we assessed the impact of interdisciplinary approach and humanist education to their career or leadership skills. And they, we posed 10 questions, which were inspired by the group. Creating social change by Skyla, Bawa, and Jonet. So, from here, I'd like to share our major findings through our own research and surveys and interviews. So, first, I'm going to share the results of surveys. 
So through surveys, uh, we found three major findings, and first one focuses on ethical leadership skills of students. So first, I will explain the graph. So this uh, graph shows the results of students who belong to international faculty of international liberal arts, which is a blue bar, and that bar shows the students of who belong to other faculties in some university. So as you are, uh, and then the graph is just one to five, and these three questions are. We talk values uh, and stick to the belief and just fair society. These questions are related to uh, ethical leadership to the gender barriers. And as you can see, you can see the growth of blue bar, which is Fila, uh, from freshman to sophomore. And this is the graph of junior and senior year students. Uh, and so through this graph, uh, you can see the growth of ethical leadership skills uh, through our four years of students and the assumption of this is that they experience study abroad, one year study abroad from the middle of freshman year to sophomore year and their these uh, study abroad experience influence to uh, them to develop ethics and values. So that's why we can see the growth of ethical leadership um, from still students. And the second findings is uh, related to shared growth and self-transformation. So in these two variables, we could not see huge difference between PILA and non pila students. And it is because of uh, because those students who took survey all study uh, humanistic education in Sofa University. So that's why there was not huge difference. And the third findings is total uh, related to total awareness. So initially we expected that PILA students would score higher in total awareness because they study in disciplinary approach. But the results was not huge difference between PILA and non PILA students. And it is because the, uh, there were few opportunities to practice these skills, so the awareness skills in university life, but they had no opportunities to experience in actual society after they graduate. And this point will be uh, more discussed in the next section by Estella. Okay, thank you, Mika. So now I'd like to move on to our major findings of interviews and system relations to our four main variables, and just to remind you they were total awareness, self transformation shared growth, and ethical leadership. And there were four main uh, findings, four major findings, and the first one is that both interviewees, they affirmed that the effects of interdisciplinary approach became more evident once they graduated and entered the market. For them, holistic analysis that is present in the interdisciplinary approach helps students to analyze situations from different perspectives and that contributes to the development of a more comprehensive understanding and in this case then we also address this understanding as total awareness. Second major finding is that study abroad show, uh, was pointed to be one of the main triggers for self transformation and compassion development. So being in a, a familiar environment, experiencing a new culture, generates a greater cross-cultural understanding and that is because with these new values and these new values are just opposed against our personal values and because of that there is a greater cross-cultural understanding and for the third major finding both interviews they have leadership roles while at university so one of them was the chief executive leader for the annual festival while the other founded the university's orchestra and for both experience, they concluded that listening skills and teamwork were very important to uh, achieve the desirable results. And these two items, listening skills and teamwork, they're also very important for shared growth. Fourth major finding is that when we ask them, how did your higher education experience your leadership? Uh, one of the interviewers said that they do not consider themselves as a leader. That is because they do not hold any official position as a leader. Moreover, this interview is said that for, for them, leaders are those who are at the top of organizations and they usually make the final decisions. And while this can be true for some types of leaders, uh, this response also shows cultural influence on this interview's perspective of leaders. And towards the end of the interview, this is specific interviewee and the other one too, they acknowledge that they do have ethical leadership traits, such as listening skills, respecting differences, compassion, and teamwork, which were all fostered while they were in university receiving an interdisciplinary approach in humanistic education. 
And lastly, we ask them, how can we improve education to develop leaders for the next 50 years? So both interviewers, they suggested that liberal arts education, which is an example of interdisciplinary approach, should be adopted in global higher education because it can generate a cross-cultural understanding at such globalized times. Second, they suggested that study abroad should be more present in this uh, global higher education experience because it can generate compassion development and also a great understanding of self. Lastly, they made some comments of how there are not enough opportunities for students to apply their knowledge, meaning that single subject students, although they can specialize, they can only apply their knowledge to that specific area. While students who receive an interdisciplinary approach, they are able to share their knowledge in many areas and with different types of people, and that would be a great advantage for the global higher education. Next, we're going to share the limitations and future directions of our research. So thank you, Stella. So now uh, we basically have two different limitations for our case study. So the first one is we could only conduct surveys and interviews in a SOCA education school meaning in Soho University and Soho University of America. And our second limitation is that we could only use three questions to measure each variable that he was mentioned. And therefore, we believe there is a more complexity behind those three questions. So maybe we should study a little bit about that to understand the complexity. And for the future directions, as we mentioned before, maybe we should understand the role of study abroad in developing ethical leaders since the majority of students who went to study abroad, they have scored higher ethical leadership skills. So what is the role of study abroad in developing ethical leadership? And our second future direction is the role of culture influences. So how does culture contribute for the development of ethics? And what kind of ethics should a leader have? So this is our future directions and limitations. Now we are going to, we are, we would like to conclude our presentation. So, why are we studying interdisciplinary approach, humanistic education, and medical leadership? So, as we introduced before, globalization has increased the interactions among diverse countries. And therefore, global higher education should develop leaders who can deal with these global interactions. And therefore, through the surveys, we can understand that uh, students who are in interdisciplinary approach has for higher ethical leadership skills compared to the other faculties. And therefore, one of the main reasons why it was a huge gap is because of the opportunity of study abroad. So students who went to study abroad, they have the opportunity to develop and understand their own values. And also, even though the variable seems very similar in the surveys, however, to the interviews, we could understand that when students graduate, from the interdisciplinary approach, they stated that interdisciplinary approach is an important element to develop cross-cultural understanding to overcome moral issues. And therefore, um, we would like to conclude that interdisciplinary approach promotes total awareness, which encourages students to develop these multi-perspective issues and uh, views uh, on global issues. And therefore, humanistic education promotes self-transformation and shared growth, which develops holistic views, holistic values. So this multi-perspective view of the world and holistic values will develop ethical leaders who are concerned and will contribute for a positive change in society. So that's our presentation for today. Thank you so, so much.
So thank you for your question. Yeah, so those kind of issues we could already develop our analysis on that point to that extent. But yes, so our conclusion is that during the uh, higher education experience, even though they are learning from different perspectives and acquiring this knowledge and these skills, the moment that they, can, that they can see the results is when they can apply. So unless they choose during their university life, they'll go out to society to apply their knowledge. Not only through like jobs, but through uh, volunteer work, projects, and things like that. They will be able to actually feel the results of this interdisciplinary approach. So only when they are passive, or when they are required to use the skills, is when they're going to actually acknowledge to themselves that, well, this program, this type of education really helps me to deal with these low issues. So, yes. I hope I have answered your question. So I guess just on a pragmatic level, um, I, I guess because of concerns about interdisciplinary studies uh, and how they correlate to um, job success. So would your answer be a student can take this kind of course without fear that they're going to have trouble in the job market? Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for example, we are all from Sofia University and we have the same kind of job of uh, interdisciplinary and our first batch just graduated this April, and the diversity of the job they get is very unique. Like they, some of them enter financial field or political field, or trade, market, business, very diverse. But in each year, they can utilize this idea to understand again whole situation of the market and connect their idea to different field of the job, or you know. So and then. It's still like a new idea, and then our first post was just graduated, so we actually see the results again. But uh, their job uh, market diversity is very unique, and yeah, I think it's very connected to their body of uh, what they are studying in this program. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further questions? Thank you so much for the presentation. I, I don't know if you were able to really um, do so much research in the area of humanistic, uh, this humanistic education in terms of the depth of the courses, in terms of um, difficulty level, or um, in terms of the courses being offered or taken at these two universities in the field of program or at Sophie University of America, the difference in um, complexity of material taught or learned, and obviously, you know, in in society, in the Japanese society versus American society, there will be differences um, in terms of uh, eligibility for um, students who graduate to be able to go to a graduate school or get a job right after graduation. So how do you think that um, humanistic education is put into, um, is either valued more through the, the quality of what is learned or because um, I think what you were studying was the, the depth and the breadth of especially um, studying abroad, being able to have um, those different experiences. But what about in terms of coursework? Um, how is humanistic education or ethical leadership kind of informed through the material study?
So it's sort of a culture that is created in this education process. And yes, it's not exclusively taught or set. Like we are teaching you a new means of communication that's <coughs> I think it goes by learning from each other. And that is the shared goal as well. In addition to that, we were trying to focus that we know that there are so many qualitative uh, people are understanding the world, but how they are using their knowledge, how they are promoting this knowledge, is it like a self-perspective or an altruistic perspective? So I think our research mo was more about how are you acknowledging these moral issues and how are you contributing for positive social change? So not much going to this in, in the context, but actually the how are you I don't know if we are answering your question, but if you have any questions, do that, let us know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have time for one brief question, maybe? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to continue the conversation after the session. So thank you. Uh, round of applause.